Oh, stop it, Mum. I want to go to war, OK? I want to be a soldier. No, look, come back here. Why oh. is your hair so tough? Why do you oh. gel it so much? Get off it, Mum. That makes me look good. I'm going to call a soldier. Oh, I know, I know you're going to be a soldier, but look, you're still my baby. Look, come here. Oh. No, not the Eskimo kisses. <laughs> Oh, not that when we were little. I don't like it, Mum. Oh, look, look, you're going off somewhere dangerous. Please, just please, just let me say goodbye to you before you go. I don't want to. I'm going to go to war. Let me open the door now, OK? Oh, God, you a big treasure chest. Oh, God. Oh, I've seen her. Oh, remember, Mum, don't open a songbird from my bedroom, OK? <laughs> I won't, son. Oh, but what I will do is play this songbird. Cracking conversation, analytical interpretation, and igniting imagination with the Lit and Lang Gang. Welcome back to the Lit and Lang Gang, guys. <laughs> Yet again, another opening composed by Mr. Grimmett. Um, I think you can expect these every week now. Yeah. I'm terrified. Uh, we'll, we'll, the bar, see, yeah. we'll see. You've set the bar It's combined well. effort. Yeah. Wonderful. Miss Goff had to leave because she was laughing too I was much. actually crying. She's going <laughs> to explode. Yeah, okay, so of course, if you haven't worked out already, we are looking at Poppies by Jane Weir. Um, and as always, we will start by telling you who's here. So you're with myself, Miss Graham. And, oh, go. <laughs> it gets wrong every time. Every you time. Say, say name. Miss Goff. And? Mr. Grimmett. Mr. Grimmett. <laughs> that was Blake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grim, Grimmett. Grim Reaper. Right, okay. <laughs> so context of this one. There's, we realise, not a huge amount to talk about with this one. No. Um, essentially, the context you'd need to know is this is very much about modern warfare, um, probably wars um, in more recent years like Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the title will come from the symbol of the poppy, which was originated at the end of World War One in 1918, yeah. but has gone on to represent more wars than just that every war yeah. since then. It's the recognition mm -hmm. of people who have passed away in the armed forces, isn't yeah. it? sacrifice they make, yeah. 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 Um, I don't, is there much more? Well, obviously, because context when it comes to poetry is, is not just about historical, it's about that social kind of side as well. <clears throat> so empathising with those who have lost their sons or family to war yeah. and understanding mm. their emotions they're going through, that is in itself a context. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's putting on the, the poetic voice mm. of somebody who is who is, has a son and his son's gone to war, yeah. but she didn't experience that. I think she yeah. talks about the idea that she... She tried to empathise with that. I think she was. She was. Uh, she talks about when she was standing in a church and she heard the voices of children quite far away, and she was kind of imagining, um, kind of losing a child, mm. and it came to something like war. And she wanted to write a poem from a woman's point of view because there aren't mm. loads and loads of poems yeah. about war mm. from the point of view of women. No, and I can't so, think if there are any others in the anthology. I mean, I know, obviously, Duffy's war photographer is... Yeah, but it's... But it's not her, is it? It's he still. It's not a female perspective. Yeah. It's a female poet, but it's not a female yeah. perspective. So this is quite unique in that way, I think, mm, unless we can think yeah. of another one. But the, possibly the emigre, in, in yeah. a way. Um, mm. But this is that the the female perspective of a traditional war, as in people, kids go away to fight. But you don't always think about the effect on the mother. No, 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 you don't. No, it's there... It, Obviously, of course, it's their names on the memorials. It's their names that are yeah. mentioned, but it's that kind of con that that common phrase, isn't it? That death is more painful for those that are left behind. That's mm. right. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what this one's really about, isn't it? Mm. So, with regard to language, there's a lot of language techniques in yeah. poppies. Um, we'll start with the um, don't start with the semantic field of nostalgia at the beginning. Yeah. So it alludes to memories. I mean, even. If we think, it says three days before Armistice Sunday. Armistice Sunday has come to mean a lot to, to people. Everyone knows what it means. It's what like what is it in case I, you don't? Remembrance. Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day. Good. Okay, sorry. Obviously, I, Mr I'm, Grimmett doesn't know. Well, I, you know, I, there might be some people who don't know what okay. that is. <laughs> what would it, 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 it The 11th of November, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Or the closest Sunday 11, to 11, the 11th. 11, 11, isn't it? Yeah. It's the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th hour. And the Sunday is the closest Sunday to the 11th. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, to remember those that have fallen in all the wars. Um, and there's this kind of nostalgia of things like um, pinning things onto him. And it, it kind of, it is throughout the whole poem, this idea of nostalgia, thinking about things from her memories. 
with her son. Yeah. And mm. obviously that does factor into different semantic fields as well, which we will cover in a yeah. moment. Yeah, there's a lot of semantic yeah. fields. You could take them almost like at separate points of the poem where they start. Um, so, for example, in stanza one, there's a semantic field that begins, and mm. it probably continues on, doesn't it, mm. of pain and warfare. So you've got words on line four, crimped, five, line five, even spasms, mm. blockades, red, 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 I suppose, to, to a degree as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, all of that kind of suggest uh, foreshadowing death, pain, war. I think with yellow, I think of yellow as a warning sign. That's the colour that's used oh, yeah, that's interesting. for warning or for okay. dangerous liquids. But hazardous. Hazardous liquids, <laughs> that's one. I remember that, yeah, yeah that I was trying about it as a warning before, the yellow bias. But then it goes into that bias binding around your blazer and the plosive sounds. Mm. Yeah. Um, is it, um, um, the previous line blockade as well that you've got that military language throughout as well there's that idea of a blockade I forget there's ones later on mm. um, that she uses we'll, we'll address when we get there but she th- that plosive sound and a lot of the alliteration is very harsh mm. sound so plosive or sibilant um, which creates oh, I don't know it's all the, the, the alliteration of the, the B sound mm. it's quite tough I think it's mm. quite it's quite strong it, it is almost one, it's almost like the b- 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 it's like starting to cry, yeah, which we talked about in London that. as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I think we're going to be saying like any alliteration of crying now. Just we did crying. talk about it in London, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> love crying, don't they? She's she's there, a lot of this is blubbing. Like fold, she's blubbing. Yeah. holding back on on blubbery. <laughs> holding back on blubbery. <laughs> oh dear. And, um, she, yeah. There's a lot, and, and it and it's and it's tough. These are sort of hard sounds, I think, mm. almost like punches. I feel like a boop, boop, boop. It's like almost like mm. a box of punching as well. So it's not it's not soothing. It's she's yeah. going through some difficult times. I can imagine someone writing that in now. The bias binding around your blaze that sounds like a box of punching. Please do not Please do that don't in. Write that. <laughs> it's not terrible. It's not terrible. But it's, it's not terrible. It's, it's, but it's it won't get not. you those high levels. Well, but definitely, yeah. I think I think what would be quite nice is that the alliterative. Uh, plosive, the plosive alliteration on line six mm. is rep, could um, symbolise her blubbing, her crying as he leaves. Yes, yeah. and it's continued with the bandaged of the sellotape into yeah. the next stanza She as well. also uses the direct address throughout, isn't it? So it's before you left, which mm. makes it really intimate. Yeah. So she's talking to someone who... Well, I mean, at this point... We don't actually know if he hasn't come back. Before yeah. you left, I pinned one on your lapel. It could be that she's sitting there like, he's home. And before you left, remember when I pinned it on your blazer? And it's not until later on that we realise that he isn't there. And this is, she's talking to him, but no one's there. She's talking, yeah. 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 And yeah. it's really sad. It's, it's quite going Do you think it? the use of those direct address as well, like I and you, is mm. it's that it's universal? This mm. could be anyone. That's right. And yeah. It could be any any son. I it's think not I'm, as effective yeah. if it's it before John left. I pinned one on his blazer. It's not yeah. quite the same. <laughs> no. no. I once had a son who left the war. He didn't come back. <laughs> no, it's, not like, it's not like that. It's. Uh, <laughs> No, do you know what? I don't um, think that would have the same impact. No, <laughs> it's not quite as emotive. But... No. Maybe if you made it into a musical, though. All right. Uh, by the way, <laughs> did you know Mr. Beth... Grimmett's writing a musical? Guy? <laughs> Beth musical uh, will be coming out again. If you'd like to get in touch with me, which nobody has, um, <laughs> I'm eagerly anticipating your call. Okay. Macbeth will, will be out soon. Though. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to hearing it, actually. Yeah. Sure. I enjoy sure. the it sounds dulcet amazing. sounds of your voice on a Friday afternoon with the yeah. guitar. Yeah. It's yeah. not just me singing it to myself. No, it's not. <laughs> Mr. Grimmett, after all the kids have left, no. is that they're alone? Like, That's at home. <laughs> That's at three in the morning, actually. <laughs> we know it secretly is, but... Yeah. Oh, we'll, let you, we'll let you have that. Yeah, it's not just Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, moving into the second stanza, we have the metaphor of the sellotape bandaged around my hand. Mm. Um, that's the line uh, that Mr. Bruff takes in his song. I really like that metaphor as well, because yeah. we were talking about the way, and I mean quite obviously that sellotape and bandage it's the idea that she's protecting herself as well she's in some way injured mm. um and it's very maternal what she's doing so she's yeah. literally wrapped sellotape around her hand to smooth all the cat hairs off his mm. of his blazer which is very maternal very maternal sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's your voice breaking in the corner <laughs> um, it's really God maternal God to okay <laughs> But Ms. Cobb, you were saying about the fact of the sellotape as well. Yeah, so sellotape, often when things are broken, you try and repair it. 
temporarily with some sellotape but you can still see the cracks or it might not it's a bit flimsy so it's this idea that you're trying to protect something that is broken yeah and it, that's the and idea she'll never be fixed she'll never be fixed so it's her that she's really trying to bandage up here yeah. mm. and she knows it's not it's not going to last cause yeah it's, 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 yeah um, and then we move into like a lot of sibilants. So smooth down your shirts, up down collar, steal the softening. So we've actually got that S sound quite prominent there. Yeah, that it, is quite soothing, isn't it? Mm. But then yeah. I guess I suppose at this point maybe she's soothing herself. Soothing, yeah. Or so mm. him, she's trying to soothe him. He's off to war. And I know obviously we play it up as a bit of a joke in the, in the uh, intro that he's like he is eager to go, but he must be nervous. So mm. she would also have to be yeah, a mother yeah. to calm. He'd be nervous. He's going off to war. Yeah. And no matter exactly. how exciting that is, there would be. Under the male bravado, there would be nerves. So maybe that's her as a I, mother again. Yeah. I was thinking this this sound. I don't. It's easy to read too much into sub, to to sibilance and yeah. alliteration, but I think it's it's good to consider it. There is a sort of slipperiness to it, isn't there? Still the softening. It's Slippery like there's no grip slipper. on those words. Yeah. It's like he's slipping away a little bit. Mm. Um, and she tries to fight that by mm. grazing. And that's a kind of hard sound, isn't it? Grazing my nose. It's not touching my nose. Okay, she was grazed. There's a little bit of friction involved there. She was like, you want... But she's putting up friction to him going. Mm. Yeah, that, that but graze. also, like, desperation. It's not desperation. a gentle... She desperately wants... Yeah. It. And and it's a it's another word coming in the semantic field of war and pain, mm. isn't it? Yeah. It's like he's going to get grazed and worse at yeah. war. And I think that bit as well, and it links into what comes up next, there's... A quite a, not quite a bit there's just a little bit of sensory imagery which I think is quite interesting of touch mm. so I wanted to graze my nose as we move on I, I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gel platforms again that's touch mm. um, and then at the end when she talks about I traced <laughs> helpful I traced the war memorial and it's like these are the things she would do she... really helpful Insistent I can't edit shrill. it either so no. that's just staying in. It's just going to ruin it. It's just going to Start again. It. Start again. No. It was in um, one of our <laughs> early ones. It was. Ones. I think the it was the first one. Yeah. yeah we had God, one. how do you guys cope? How do I cope? There's a firebolt in my room. It makes it scares the hell out of me in the morning mm. when that goes off. Um, but that idea of touch, like she longs to touch him. And I think that's something that a lot of people could empathise with, with someone that's lost someone. Mm. Um, you can look at photogut photographs you can hear recordings you can do all these things but the thing you can't ever do is touch them yeah and you can't get that back you can smell their perfume it's all that, the things yeah. that you can't touch and at the end the one thing she can touch is his name on a on a grave or on a memorial and mm. it's so sad it's, yes. that's interesting it's just the it's the power like the power of language possibly as well i mean all poets have got to be fans of the english language to have yeah. him touching a name Mm. is a, a bit of a nod something to the written gave, word. Something she gave That's him. right. Yeah, it's, yeah we do... We do um, I was listening to John A. Agar, who wrote um, Checking Out My History, and he I says that we are constructed... And I played very loudly so I miss could hear. Um, <laughs> disrupted my period them, five lessons. Me, them, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to teach, OK? <laughs> Just trying to be engaged. Don't anything. Just try desperately. Try to be a good me, teacher. That's how I've been a good teacher. Being engaged, just turn the volume up. Yeah. That's me being good. Drown everything out. <laughs> Drown out all their other thoughts. <laughs> sheer volume um, um, He was talking about how language uh, constructs us in a way. Mm. And I think it's just a little little note, uh, I suppose. That mm. it's, a, it's a universal experience, isn't it? Yeah. Unless we have a language attached to things, we can't describe the way we think or feel. That's right. Yeah, we do shared. need it. Yeah. And I think making that the name ambiguous at the end and not saying, you know, as you say, I touched John's name on the... I, I traced the J of your John on your... <laughs> it doesn't... It's not... It, it, not it then makes it less it. universal. Yeah. Also, do you know why Eskimos touch noses? No. no. It's because they touch lips. Their lips get stuck together because of the, the, the temp, low temperatures. Ah. Oh, OK. We kind of get this sense as well, a semantic field of restraint starts to appear as well. Like, I resisted to do this. I, I think even brave. Previous, yeah. Yeah, these kind of ideas mm. that she's holding back, um, steeled the softening. So, all of this idea of she's restraining herself. You said blockade, didn't you, as well? Yeah, blockade. Yes. Um, what's it she says a little bit later on when she's talking about reinforcement well reinforcements that's more military but again like mm. protecting yourself a yeah. little bit mm. um, so I think there's that that starts to creep in throughout the text here mm. um, and then we were talking about the black thorns of his hair that like 
you know, you think about a child's hair being incredibly soft and now he's toughened it yeah, himself. But maybe she, it? yeah, but we were also saying it's almost religious as well. Mm. Um, I don't know, and, and again, we'll mention it, it structure when... In, in what way is it religious? The crown. Well, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore mm. when he walked to his death. Yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, that is replicated in lots of imagery as well, like holly leaves and stuff like that, but that idea of that... that the reason they're Christmas you know, associated with religion is that Christmas it's Carol, isn't it, with mm. the holly leaves? Yeah. I mean, the holly itself. Yeah, yeah. Is is representative of the, of the crowns and the blood of blood is the, yeah. the berries, the whatever. Mm. Yeah. But so and the way he's got black thorns in his hair, and I think if we take this as almost like a prayer that she's now saying that mm. he's gone, because there's little, like not a huge amount, but there's little moments of religious imagery in here. That if we do take that as almost a religious aspect, it's like she's saying a prayer for him. Yeah. Um. There's no. There's no set moment at any point where she actually addresses the fact he's dead. We just are left to, to work that out. Um, and it's up, it's up to us when we work I, it out. Yeah, I think as well with that, there's when you if you do lose someone, you tend to go back to the last time you saw them quite a lot. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. And you replay it over and over again. I think that this is one... an example of one of the times that she... That this character that she, Jane Weir's made up that does that. She's returning to that last it, moment. It totally makes sense yeah. if you think about grief for somebody to do that, to return to the last yeah. moment, to hold on to that, to, to go over it over and again mm. and, and make it eternal through um, the written word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Um, then we have all my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt. I think that flattened and rolled, isn't that exactly the same as the emigre? And it, that, that, that almost that language is used exactly the same when she talks about oh the, t- the t- ranks um, yeah the tanks oh. rolled in yeah. and it's like <clears throat> again it's just I military was th- I was thinking of someone jumping out of a helicopter and, and tuck, uh, tucking and rolling oh that's interesting I've never oh. thought about it that way I've always taken it as the very maternal sewing tuck. oh well I think she's using language in a clever way which can be <coughs> interpreted in, in different mm. ways I it's almost like it, it all rolls together, doesn't it? This yeah. language of of textiles and making things and sewing, mm. like traditionally feminine things, is she, uh, with with the violence yeah. of war. So is she making poppies as well? Turned into the felt. They sometimes wear felt poppies, don't they? She could be making felt she could poppies. Be making she a could poppy. be. I wouldn't she could. putting all her memories. I wouldn't into presume that to say that she is to occupy her time. Maybe she is. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. and, but the enjambment as well, because it goes into the next stanza here, yeah. turning to felt slowly melting. And can't contain she, the yeah. emotions there, can she? It's like here she's really struggling to keep it together. Mm-hmm. The gr- and I also like the idea of like, it's that moment where she's saying goodbye, but grief continues. Yeah. And it continues on into the next bit as well. Um, mm. Sorry. Then we've got the treasure chest. Which was beautifully mentioned in the introduction. It does look like treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I, it makes me think of that simile, makes me think of the, that your whole world's your oyster. Mm. And I know that sounds really cliche, but it's that idea that you've got something out there for you, your whole life ahead of you when you're mm. young, and it's been taken too quickly. Yeah. Because all yeah. these opportunities, all yeah. of these possibilities, I, I, what you could become, who you would be. Yeah. And it's taken away from him, so, like, I mean, so quickly, because the next line is a split second late, a split the, second. There is something in that, the, that simile of a treasure chest, which, which is, I always thought strange, because when you're leaving at somewhere, you feel like you're going into a bigger area, but actually a treasure chest is a closed off area, mm. almost like a coffin. Ooh. It doesn't look dissimilar. Yeah. It's almost like he's 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 being trapped because actually once you get in a, if you go inside, if you go inside of a treasure chest and you're locked inside. Frequently, but yeah. There is you, the treasure chest is the treasure is meaningless. Yeah. You've got nowhere to nowhere to spend it. No. It's, but it's like it looks pretty and you go in and then it's very inviting closed. but also very constraining. Yeah. At the same yeah. Time. Yeah. Like war would have been. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. He's well, made he's to He's kind look of exci- he's excited. He's excited by it because he's intoxicated by the idea of war. Yeah. Um, there, there is there is negative and positive connotations to intoxicated, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's almost like he's so excited, he's blinded, he's drunk to he's the possibility. Too, he's drunk. Of death. You know, has he is, is he is he too drunk on mm. it, mm. which mm. makes him not really see clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And start crawling into treasure chests, which he seems to I think treasure chest is also quite childlike. It's very naive. It it's is, like yeah. a toy. So, again, links with that idea of um, 
I was about to say immaturity, and I don't mean immaturity. Innocence. That's what innocence, I mean. Innocence. Yeah. Um, mm. That is a. I mean, he's presented as a child throughout, isn't he? Yeah. So I think that kind of goes maybe in because the reality is that war it does mean that you have to become an adult fairly quickly. So to preserve him in that innocence mm. is something that's like a protective measure for herself. Yeah. Um, she doesn't want to think of him as an adult. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Then we've got the the metaphors. We've got the two bird metaphors really close by. Mm. So after you've gone, I went into your bedroom and released a songbird from its cage. What do you think that means? I mean, I've often taken that as her crying. So she mm. goes to his room and cries and releases this yeah. songbird that she was clearly keeping caged <laughs> earlier. I yeah. think that's a really nice way of saying it. But I mean, there's a positivity to songbird mm. in yeah. that case. I don't know if she's saying on some level that expressing your emotions is good. Um, it probably she felt good for her to cry after having to yeah. stick. She says she has to remain brave at the beginning of this stanza. It's the only mention, really, of her emotions. Mm. She doesn't say at any point that she was sad or upset. She implies it all the way through. Mm-hmm. The only mention of explicitly saying how she felt was, I was brave. Like it in the past yeah. tense as well, implying that she no longer is. Yeah, she can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, and that releasing a songbird, if it's crying, then it was really necessary. I sort of thought first time I imagined it, her playing a song that he would listen to out of, um, I don't know, off his CD player or vinyl player, <laughs> whatever this, whatever this cassette. was set, cassette tape. Something because, deceiving, yeah. Because there was, then it reminds you of that. I, I probably it is mm. more likely to, to be crying there. I just like the idea that the bird was in a cage. Rip this was locked as well, in. As well, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the idea that something and released from a cage. This is something that has been held in. And considering she's been talking about being restrained, I I was brave. That's why I've often taken mm. the idea that this songbird, which again is really really positive, but she, it's now that he's gone. Oh, I can let it out, and mm. not show him it, how she felt. Really which I imagine is a, a situation for a lot of mothers and wives, and, and not just that, like. Brothers and sisters watching someone they love go off to war. It's like, right, I've got to be tough because they're going into a tougher situation. Yeah, so yeah. I've got to hold it together. Can't be selfish. Can't be selfish yeah. here. So they hold it in until they've gone. And yeah. I reckon that's something a lot of people could empathise with. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'd say as well, if, I don't know if doves can doves sing. Because he, if in this, if we, go, if we go to the next metaphor, which is a layer, a single dove flew from the pear tree, there's one way to interpret that. But if that's supposed to be a metaphor for him leaving as well, She's a songbird and he's a dove, sort of, in this case. It's almost like they're separating from each other. Yeah, um, dove is symbolic of, again, religious imagery. I went, the to, dove? I, I went to Sunday school, so I've studied the Bible through and through, and the dove is what Noah released from the ark. And when it came back, it had the branch in its mouth to mm. say that the flood was going and peace was returning to earth. Oh, okay, so, so, so the land was close. Land was a, Land existed again. Yay. <laughs> well, is that holding out the olive branch quotation? That's where that comes from. That bit I don't know. That bit they didn't cover in Sunday mm. school. Maybe I need to go back. <laughs> <laughs> right, go back, do your research, and we'll just do this. Yeah. I wondered though, why? Uh, there may not be an answer to this. Why pear tree? Partridge in a pear tree is normally what I think of. But again, yeah, I always Similar think that too. Why, why pear tree? Because oh, I suppose pear is a is a homophone for pear, is in P A I R. Which pair of there are And a the pair, single dove they? flew from the pear tree. Oh, that's really oh, sad. That's sad. It is. Oh, I've pear tree kind of... has been associated with different parts of our lives, including childbirth, sustenance, and others. It's also to do with longev- longevity, abundance, and femininity, the... immortality. Oh, and the bird has flown from like childbirth. It's like, yeah. it's... well, there's that, that message, isn't mm. there? There's that metaphor, even, or idiom, when mothers have empty nest syndrome and their children fly the nest yeah. and it's mm. the idea that the mother feels bereft without her children there anymore um, my mother feels it very keenly <laughs> um, and therefore if a pear tree is symbolic of femininity, maternity, mm. childbirth and he's flown away, he's left her yeah oh my oh. god, that's horrible yeah I like your idea there as well. Yeah, the pear tree. Oh, I'm seeing a lot more in that line now. I really hate it because it's really sad. It is sad. Oh, I don't like it. Look at that. Look what a poem can do. That's that's what's great about different interpretations is that... I cried the first time I read this poem. I I really just sat here and I just was like, I I don't like that one at all. I mean, I like it in the sense of it's powerful. But I genuinely sat and cried and thought, oh my God, what if that was like my little... I mean, girls, but what if that was one of my little nieces? 
Mm. Well, yeah. I, 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 you, how do you get yeah. over that? Yeah. I, I don't know. You don't. You don't ever get over that, and that's Look. why uh, Miss Jones actually um, as well. Sorry, I know a lot of Miss Jones cast want her to be on the podcast. She will be. Um, we'll but they said one. they said that um, she said when she read this first time she found herself choking up mm. as a mother. Bob Bob Geldof uh, said <laughs> recently. <laughs> 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 I'm getting most people don't even know who Bob Geldof is, but Bob Geldof, the uh, lead singer of the yeah. Boomtown Rats and a uh, uh, pioneer of um, Live Aid in the seventies. A Band Aid, you might know the Christmas song. He oh, Band Aid, was it? Yeah, okay, yeah it's Christmas time. There's no need to be afraid. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and good song. Um, he said he lost his daughter, Peaches, uh, Peaches Geldof, yeah. and he and he re- recently said that he he doesn't get over it and he cries. Um, just for no reason, and he called it a bottomless grief, mm. and it yeah. and it is. It's the thing that you don't get over. I think no, the worst loss you can yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Coming from see, three people who aren't parents, <laughs> <laughs> we do not empathise here because we don't know. <laughs> um, no, so, really um, and then she starts to move, doesn't she? Because then she starts to leave and she goes to the churchyard. Yeah. And you were talking about the fact it's the yard, not the church. Yes, so it's strange to say that skirt, rather than skirting around the church wall, it's just churchyard, but actually if we interpret churchyard, we know what's in a churchyard. It's graves. Mm. Mm. But again, she doesn't say it, it's all implied. It's all implied. Which is, the, I think, the, the biggest beauty of this poem. We all know what it feels like to stifle our emotions and to, to have to hold back, and she does that, and I think that's... That's the thing that's most universal about this whole poem is her ability to, to hold it back and just mm. let us interpret her pain mm. for ourselves. Well, she never addresses... It's almost like, like a death. As, as a... It's missing from the poem. Mm. There's no semantic field of... I mean, maybe there is in war, it's but it's not like... No it's not that there's really obviously explicit this is death. It's hidden in using. other metaphors, isn't it? It's hidden, and I think maybe that's so relatable because... She can't bring herself to say it. It's like if she says it, it becomes, it a, becomes reality. a reality. Mm. And isn't there that the stages of grief that I heard mm. recently? Actually, it's not meant to be. You know, those stages of grief you go through, like anger, yeah. da da da, and finally acceptance. Apparently, it's not the people around you that go through that. It, or, it, or no, it's the it's the person, not the person going through it. It's the people around that experience those things, yeah. as opposed to the individual. Yeah. But um, it's that's what she's doing. She hasn't accepted it, so she can't say it. No. So it's all heavily implied. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then she she makes it to the churchyard. She again those very maternal tucks, darts, pleats. So those are all sewing, um, references. Re- sewing references, um, yeah. things that she would do. She's talked a little bit about you know smoothing him, if, and that so that's then been there previously. Mm. And then I love the bit when it says without a winter coat or reinforcements of scarf, gloves, and it's almost like whatever she's doing now, she's not prepared. She's not. Yeah. She's not got the necessary things to enable her to deal with what she's going to experience. Yeah. Perhaps that's also maybe there because there's a lot of subtle references implying that he wasn't prepared. Mm, there's maybe. not the reinforcement there. They're going in not blind, but young. they're going yeah, young, uh, inexperienced and naive. Yeah. And they they've not got the winter coat. Winter coats often associated with like experience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it could be that. Um, and then just moving into the final bit of the poem, when it says, I'm reaching the top of the hill, I trace the inscriptions. Well, there's that trace bit, that's the closest she can get to him now, yeah. um, unlike before when she could physically touch him. And I like the metaphor of, the, of reaching the top of the hill, symbolic of some uphill struggle, that getting there was hard. She's had to go through quite a lot, up a hill, and now she's here. Yeah. This might even be the first time she's visited. Yeah. Could be, yeah. Um, and she leans against the memorial like a wishbone. And, and at the end, there's this semantic field of futility, wish hope like this idea that these they're lovely ideas but you can't do anything with it you can no. make a wish you can hope something will happen but until you do something with it it's pointless and there's nothing she can do yeah no. i think that that verb leaned that kind of stationary mm. yeah it's for verb support. Sh- shows it's for support yeah it's like i need somebody's proper up there's no mention of a father figure here mm. to kind of support her so it is very much told from her kind of independent unsupported view which some women and men and would, fathers would have had to go through mm. the word, you know, bone as well, the imagery of a bone, connotations of death again. Yeah. yeah. But she, um, I mean, at what point did we realise it was a son, not a husband? I think gel black thorns of your hair, it does imply 
and Grace and I was the Eskimos. I was the Eskimos bit. When I read that, I was like, because oh, I've got to be honest, when I started reading this, I thought it was a husband. Why is that too? Why is that a, not a woman? If it's a, a girl, I don't know. A girl? Oh, it could be. It, it could, could be, be a be daughter. Girl. It could be a daughter. But I think it's actually because it was composed to be about a son. God, we massively gender stereotype this poem for years. Is it? A, could it be about a daughter? I suppose it's. But then, easy, then again, so. like we said, because they've got mm. the direct address I and you, it could be universal. And the gelled black thorns of your hair, unlikely to be a girl. Well, that's what. Well, yeah. Do the girls have to gel their hair down the army as well? Oh, they shave well, it. Yeah. Don't they? Uh, or do they still shave it? I think. No, I don't think they have to. Girls no. have to shave it. I've had a few friends in the army. Well, right, right. mm. Yeah, I I don't think the poet would mind whether you interpret this as a oh. as a female or male. I think she left it purposefully open. Mm. Um, she didn't go. She didn't but, go say I went into your pink bedroom and released a songbird. No, you released a Shakira CD. You left alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was like mild it slightly, wasn't it? But, <laughs> <laughs> That wouldn't have then gone into the AQA anthology, I let's be honest. It. Come on. Add a little boogie to hips, don't lie. Yeah. Um, it cheap felt, the I felt I, thrilled for, that you were off hand. Yeah, I actually <laughs> forgot you left for a minor minute. For I a got, moment, I thought I got you carried away with single, single ladies. <laughs> I started booging on, and then I remembered I went to the church and I leaned against the wishbone. <laughs> because you were, in fact, dead. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But, um... I, I remember reading this first time and just instantly presumed it was a husband and then yeah. realised it was a child and 11J will know that I was like, is it worse? Is it worse that it's a son? It's like, yeah, of course it's all child. It's, of course it's worse. Like That idea we've mentioned previously that you never get over that kind of thing, ever. Mm. Not to say you get over the death of a partner, you don't. No. It's a different bond, isn't it? It's a it? different bond, isn't it? Because Maternal. you go through breakups and you your heart hurts, but you you move on eventually and you find someone new and you don't have the same relationship but you're able to form a similar one mm. um, but pa- parental relationships that's mm. irreplaceable even oh, having yeah. even if you've got seven, eight, nine children if you lose mm. one you're never going to get that relationship back no, no I matter. think yeah and I think that's why at the end of the poem she she listened in past tense but probably still does this character just hoping to hear that mm. voice just to be close on some level mm. to that child because you you never, you're never going to get over it. And that's yeah. quite nice the way that she... I mean, I know we talked a lot about the sensory imagery, but the voice as well. So, um, weirdly enough, like it, it's not something you can pull back from your mind. It's really hard to pull back voices specifically yeah. to hear someone's voice. You can... It is difficult to remember it, how someone sounds. How remember how someone sounds. Yeah. Like, I found a recording of my grand yeah. the other day, yeah. and it was really emotional. And I clicked play, and I was like, oh my God, her Essex... She had way more of an Essex accent than I remember her having. Yeah. Mm. But after a few years, I'd completely forgotten. I couldn't hear her voice anymore. It's like an imperfect imitation, isn't it? Yeah, you can yeah. kind of hear it, but it's not. So she's yeah. like longing to hear something she'll never hear again. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, and again, that dove pulling again, and we were talking about, you were saying the uh, Oh, pulled freely, yeah, the oxymoron then, and that's echoed in the last line, catching on the wind. So pulled, those, those pulled and catching, those two verbs there, suggest some like kind of friction, like you're she's being held back. But then you've got freely, which obviously implies that you are free. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to say He's that. He's gone. Liberated. You're liberated. And then the wind also has connotations of freedom too. Mm. And you've got that echoed, well, what, within two lines within each other? Mm. So that, so the Motif oxymoron. Has come up twice, isn't it? And then the juxtaposition at the end is that idea that whilst you are living, you are dealing with elements of freedom, like the treasure chest but you are caught in these emotions. I would argue the treasure yeah. chest is is, the, is that same juxtaposition of yeah. imagery as well because it's yeah. it's freedom. With, if you've got loads of money, that's great, but it's also a closed box. Restraint. It's about restraint. Yeah. It's an interesting image. Mm-hmm. And that's I think it's it's yeah. kind of like dealing with like the the complexities of like humanity as well, isn't it? You've constantly mm. you've got this freedom, but at the same time you've got these restraints, whether it be emotionally yeah. or physically. Holding yeah. you back from things. I, th- I, th- yeah. I think the, the best poems are about that. Yeah. Internal conflict and op- oppositions that exist in all of us. Yeah. Oh, I love internal conflict poems. Mm. Daddy by Sylvia Plath. Oh, that's brilliant. That is yeah. Yeah. powerful. Do you know yeah. um, uh, who wrote um, Game of Thrones? George R. R. Martin. I think he borrowed this from somebody else, but he says the only thing worth writing about is the conflict of the human heart. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. That Game of Thrones yeah. does not focus solely on the conflict of the human heart. <laughs> but it arguably, it's it, a lot of it. I mean, if you look at certain characters, it's about every everyone who's perceived to be one thing is yeah. can be something else as well. And you know that they've got an internal battle going on. 
which she does here to some extent. She's got to be brave for her son, but she also mm. wants to hold him. And I think that oxymoron, that pulled freely, mm. is kind of how she feels, where she wants him to be free and go mm. out and, pr- exactly. and support him, but she yeah. wants to pull him back. Yeah, yeah definitely. Keep him in the nest. Structure. Yeah. Really we said structure quickly. Yeah, I'm, got to be quick. Yeah. <laughs> you got something to be. Some, something more important to do, Mr. I've Grimm? Got so many things to be. So many parties to go to, so many invitations. All right. <laughs> Very popular man. Um, I'm going home. I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying that there's a lack. I've got to go to Sainsbury's. Yeah. It's raining, it's going to be boring. Lame. <laughs> there's a lack of Volta in the poem. There's no turning point. There's no realisation that, like, and here's the bit where we start to address his death. Yeah. It's no solution there. as well, is yeah. there? No solution. Yeah. It's just there throughout. And that's, pain. And that's kind of what we were discussing. It's kind of when you lose someone close to you, when you experience death, it feels like that. It feels like it, you're kind of waiting for this answer. And when it happens, it feels weird, doesn't it? It's mm. like there's no real closure. That person's no. gone and you can't go back to them and say goodbye again or whatnot. It's I kind feel of that we're that, providing yeah. a counselling session along with <laughs> this poem analysis I know, today. Yeah. I know, it's deep, isn't it? If anyone uh, needs a little bit of guidance, Miss yeah. Goff is found in UD4. <laughs> uh, tune in for the following podcast after this, uh, Miss Goff's counselling. Miss Goff's counselling, this um, one, PTSD. Probably took too much on from when I actually experienced it myself. You blubberation know? Yeah. sessions. The blubberation sessions. <laughs> That's literally what it is, yeah. Um, and there's also, it's in four irregular stanzas. It's really unstructured, mm-hmm. um, maybe to represent her life now that he's gone. It's unstructured, it's broken, but equally the same. That You know, she's struggling to contain... Unlike someone... We were talking the other week about London, weren't we, and saying that that's so structured because he almost has to be, mm. that he has to live by these rules and therefore something that could turn into a rant. Mm. There's no rules for her. She doesn't have to stick by anything. This is just an outpouring and therefore there's no structure at all mm. to it, which is quite... Lovely. Is there is there an element to which this is stream of consciousness? I know it's broken up by Sejora, but kind of the like like overflow. Yeah. I think overflow. Yeah, yeah it's over- stream of consciousness flowing. is just when it's just everything on your mind in one go, unfiltered. Just what? Yeah, Ulysses. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, American it. Psycho. Oh, <laughs> the hard books to read, stream of consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also loads of enjambement. It increases as the poem goes on, but then into the final stanza, that enjambment slows, like mm. she's restraining herself again. Yeah. She's become resigned, like the, her body language against the wishbone, I think. Mm. It's almost... It's, she's... She can't... I feel like she she can't do it anymore. She, she, she hasn't can't, got the strength. She hasn't got the strength. Even um, things of strength, That's why like the enjambment calms yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Weaken around it her. begins and ends with memorial, actually. It's got this circular structure. Oh, yeah, it does. Ah. It does. Like memory and remembering the fallen. Yeah. The, yeah. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, themes. Main one, memory. Yeah. This one goes beautifully with the emigre. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think memory, yeah. I think the more likely to get a question on effects of conflict. Yeah. Mm. But me- memory, go, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say, because there's so much, ref- so many references to this childlike innocence, which is rife throughout emigre as well. And it's like internal. Yeah, well, yeah, internal it's, uh, conflict. Inter- yeah. Well, this is what we're coming to, isn't it? I guess yeah. effects of conflict. Yeah. I think the, the, effect, the, mo- the most obvious thing for me is the effects of, of war as conflict is that... People don't always think that kids have kids have got to go to, away to war and die. That's, mm. that's something people have written about over and over again. It doesn't make it any less um, painful, awful pain. and painful. But it, the other pain that's not always documented is is that is that heartbreak of a, yeah. from the mother, mm-hmm. and that is the effect of conflict of mass conflict. But also, I think as you're going to say, there's internal conflict here as well. Yeah. So yeah. inside herself, she's not. She doesn't really know what to do. So it's all internally conflicted, not really knowing, and therefore Remains is very good yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this one goes beautifully with Remains anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Mm. And again, maybe the emigre, that mm. internal memory, conflict yeah. of yeah. wanting yeah. desperately for the place to be what she remembers, but that not being the reality, yeah. and being conflicted the way that the city hides behind her, like she's protecting some you've kind of... You've got the of banned language, so you're not allowed to speak about it anymore. Yeah. Exactly, you've got, the, yeah. you've got military language very similar across the yeah. two, yeah. so yeah. they go quite well. Yeah. Super. Amazing. Awesome, guys. Um, next, we are going to be moving on to War Photographer, because we're going to go through them in order now. Um, war Photographer, and hope you found this helpful. Um, if you ever have any questions year 11 please feel free to pop in and ask us about it it's lovely hearing that you guys are listening to yeah yeah feel free to ask uh miss Goff, miss graham 
I'm Mr. Grimmett in UC6. I'm here for you always. Uh, he might give questions. you a little reenactment, little role No, play. I won't. I absolutely <laughs> won't. So don't ask We're me. We're doing it in London town. Governor. Mm. Governor. Mm. <laughs> um, on that note, um, Mr. Grimmett, I believe the world is open to you like a treasure chest. Open it, I'll see you. <laughs>